Alright, so what's going on everyone? It's uh, Ranger X here, yeah! Alright, so don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe. So we can reach 10 subscribers. I'm throwing it out there. 10 subscribers, please. That would be great. Alright, so today we'll be doing Chapter 2 of the Holiday Express. Uh, I technically started it a little bit. I did it in the video earlier. So we're going to do a replay of this one. So... Scene two, one, all jolly as sweet. All right, hopefully it doesn't, it doesn't uh, like cut me out with the sound on this game like it did last time. That would be very appreciative. Uh, saves me some uh, edits. I ate earlier, I'm having a little trouble, a little trouble digesting. So this is old Jolly's room. Where should there should be important clues in here? Alright. So there's two viable information here, and I need to pay attention to those two. So this one. A thermostat placed inside the suite. Ooh, it's really warm in here, isn't it? Yeah. And the clock. Clock with its hands stopped around 20 seconds, I guess. Or, yeah, 1220. I, I guess that I think that's 1220. I think the double zeros mean it's a 12. Something like that. I think that's what it means. I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like that's what it means. Uh, perhaps it stopped when it fell. And then the book. Uh, the title reads A Piece of Cake. Desert. Science. Let's take a look inside. Sugar. Uh, solid. Solifies. And its color fades over time, meaning the state of sugar. Goonies. Riddles. Can indicate how long it has been out in the open. Interesting bit of information. I think it has something to do with this. The cake of desert science. I think that's what it is. Alright, next. Uh, I think we gotta get close to him now. It's old Jolly's gift sack. Oh, I, I heard it. <laughs> there seems to be something inside. How about we take a closer look? So it takes five beeps. Okay. Gifts spilled out of old Jolly's gift sack. Gift boxes that fell out of the sack. There are gifts tag. There are gift tags with names written on them. Some with names of passengers. <coughs> Still in my throat. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, the candy cane. Old Jolly's candy cane with strawberry jam all over it. Old Jolly loved this cane. Oh, Old Jolly. Uh, the hat. Old Jolly's hat with strawberry jam all over it. There are sugar. that seem to belong to really stop that seem to be that seem to belong to them as well oh old jolly and then this is the last one maybe some of it got ripped off when old jolly fell old jolly's white beard oh old jolly All right. <laughs> You're one step closer to the truth. I suppose that's it for now. 
Suspects, Chapter Two. So here we go. Uh, I didn't fully complete it, but here we go. The Suspects, Scene Two Two. The Suspects. Sweet jelly of mine, there's jam everywhere. It's a crime scene. Until we arrive at the closest station and a proper investigation has been concluded, we are obligated by law to preserve its integrity. Huh? Who are you two? We hoped it wouldn't come to this, but we are detectives. <laughs> How did you? Oh, it was rather obvious. The way you were so secretive about your occupation and destination, the documents, the hushed whispering. At first, I didn't know what to make of your intentions. But soon, the facts added up, and it became clear who you are. Detectives on a mission! And detectives always come in pairs. <laughs> Even the sight of old Jolly's body didn't startle you. And at that very moment, my theory was confirmed. Remarkable. Nice I would job. expect no less from a writer of such great renown. Yes, Linza Cookie. Your theory was indeed correct. Now, I would be lying if I said I expected such an incident. But one thing is certain the culprit yeah. is one of us. I like murder mystery type stuff like this. It's one of my favorite uh, type of uh, mysteries. Murder mystery is like one of my top mystery shows. Naturally. After all, there is no way of escaping from a running train. That is true. But who could have... It is very likely that the culprit committed this gruesome crime in the period from midnight to 1 a.m. How do you know that? Macaroni cookie, if you will. Okay, so this is where it comes harder. From midnight to 1 a.m. Did cheddar cheese cookies say that because of all the evidence? Something in this room must hold the clue. Let's combine the items and spef specify the time. Right. So what I've concluded that uh, this one is it. And it ha I think it has something to do with this book. Uh, I think it's this one. I don't know. That's it. Uh... Oh, sugar girls. Oh, it's this one. Oh, okay. Got it. So, that's gonna be a lot of cutting in this one, so... There we go, got it. God, that helps, like, tremendously. I don't even know how I'm supposed to be able to figure that out. I just keep guessing a lot. Taking in the... Taking... Oh, yeah, taking into... Uh, accident. The stopped clock. Taking into account, sorry. The stopped clock and the sugar. Crumlins. Next to old Jelly's hat, we can know when the crime took place because. Oh god, no, please. Okay. Okay. God, that's so stupid. Okay, so it's. That one. And this one. Let's just go. Move on. Right! 
The state of sugar granules scattered on the floor indicates that the incident oh, happened smart. around midnight. I, I can't the dropped watch over there stopped between 12 and 1. Which means our victim here engaged in a physical confrontation with the culprit, resulting in the dropping of said watch. Okay, and the weapon? What could it be? <laughs> okay. What are the two pieces of enemy that's at point? Not the weapon used in the incident. Okay. Okay. Wow, how did I not notice that? And there we go. Alright. Got it. Oh god, it's stupid stupid. Old Jolly's position suggests they were hit with a blunt object from behind. Something with a decent reach and hardness to ensure. Ah, of course! The candy cane, right here! <laughs> impressive. Most impressive. The villain used Old Jolly's cane? How horrible! Well, I am most certain that I know what the Sugar Gnome was doing. Oh, do you know? An untied gift sack. Gift boxes with our names scattered across the floor. And a holiday hat and beard. Judging by these items, it's clear Old Jolly was preparing gifts for us when the incident occurred. Oh. Oh my! Who could have done such a thing? That's exactly what we're gonna find out. Everyone, please move to the dining car where we will question you. Hmm. Was the sugar gnome feeling cold? This room is intolerably hot. My cheeses will positively melt away. Hmm. Such a familiar beginning. Too familiar. Indeed, it follows my story almost to the letter. The victim, in the enclosed space of the running express train. Then, according to my manuscript, the antagonist will be... Miss Linzer Cookie, please proceed to the dining car. Um, esteemed detectives, I'd like to make a proposition. You see, my services and expertise might be very beneficial to the investigation. Perhaps I could assist you? Pardon? With respect, Miss Linzer Cookie, a famous crime story writer you may be, but reality is far from fiction. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It will be an honor to work with you. <laughs> what? But Detective Cheddar... Oh, marvelous. I will do my best not to get in your way. Besides, I already spoke to all the passengers yesterday. I'm sure you will find my remarks most helpful. Okay. That is what I call an excellent point, Macaroni Cookie. Let us accept Linzer Cookie's proposition. <laughs> but Linzer Cookie is a civilian. This is strictly against procedure. Stop. Procedures, procedures. We are on a running train, after all. The brass doesn't have to know. But we agree on one condition. We are in charge of the investigation. Oh, give me a break. Fine. But FYI, I won't be held responsible if anything bad happens, Detective Cheddar Cheese. Well, then it's settled. Now it's about time to start detecting. Right. Oh, jolly incident report. Cane and Cane and Strawberry Jam. Strawberry Jam. Next scene interrogation one. Finally got to the next scene. one. All right. Boop. Boop. Scene two, three, interrogation one. We don't have a suspect at the moment, but keep in mind that one of us here is the culprit. We will begin with checking your alibis. Okay. <laughs> don't mind me. I simply volunteered to take down everyone's replies. Old Jolly Case, record one. Vampire Cookie brought in for questioning. <clears throat> Alibi. 
was present at the tree lighting ceremony at the time of the incident. Confirmed by Angel Cookie, Carol Cookie. Okay. So, I'm the first in line, huh? I drunk the juice, sparkling cookie prepared in the desert. Too bad old jelly declined because that was some tasty juice. I had more juice played cards with other cookies than more juice. Then we all attended the tree lighting ceremony. It was one heck of a light show. According to anything out of the ordinary, I saw old Jelly and Angel Cookie talking during supper. Angel Cookie's expression was peculiar. Or peculiar. Or, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> when the crime took place, Vampire Cookie was. Vampire Cookie's alibi at the time of the incident. Oh god, okay. Uh, I can't really choose anything else, can I? Okay. You're saying you were at the tree lighting ceremony, huh? Was I? Oh, yeah, uh, I guess I was. Uh, I, I had too much grape juice last night. <laughs> if there's something suspicious about Vampire Kiki, it must be... Oh, my God. talk with old Jolly about the grape juices they carried? They seemed so tempting, did they not? Well, well, well. So the poor sugar gnome was a mere obstacle standing between you and a sip of fancy grape juice, huh? Classic! <laughs> what? What do you take me for? We... we made a deal! Old Jolly would let me have a little taste for a small donation of coins! That was it! They even made me sign a formal agreement. Uh, here! Sugar gnomes and their no-nonsense ways. <laughs> hmm. Was there anything else? Did you notice anything unusual yesterday? Well, Angel Cookie looked quite suspicious talking to old Jolly over supper last night. But I doubt it had anything to do with, yeah, you know, the, the incident on our hands. <laughs> Vampire Cookie was in the lounge car drinking juice with other cookies. His alibi is pretty solid. Okay. So, pretty sure it wasn't him. Just gives you two. Okay. Uh, I think I have time for a second one. Investigation two, scene two, four. Thanks. Next! Old Jolly Case, record two. Angel Cookie. Alibi was present at the tree lighting ceremony at the time of the incident. Confirmed by Vampire Cookie, Carol Cookie. Okay. I had cake and cheese after supper. I prepared flying. I practiced flying. Then played cards with the others. And then I saw the tree lighting ceremony with Carol Cookie. And by Barry Kiki. It was very pretty. 
okay. When the crime took place, Angel Cookie was... And you were at the tree lighting ceremony with other cookies. Is that right, Angel Cookie? Of course. I was trying very hard to fly to the top of the tree. <laughs> Angel Cookie's motive could be. Oh, his motive now. Okay. about with old Jolly over supper last night. Oh, I... Mm, we talked about... Well, I asked if old Jolly could fly. It's the sleigh that allows me to fly around. Easy peasy. Ho, ho. Yes, that's all. Did they now? <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> Look at those eyes. <laughs> Listen, pal, you do have something shady about that squint of yours, if I'm being completely honest with you. I get that. Sometimes. What hides behind those pale blue eyes, I wonder? But Angel Cookie's alibi is solid as well. What can you tell me about old Jolly? While everyone was waiting for the ceremony to begin, Creme Brulee Cookie and old Jolly had an argument in the hallway. Oh my god. Oh god, interrogation three. Do I have time? No. Done like one, two, three, four, five. I'm just gonna do them all. I'm gonna do it chapter by chapter. I don't really care. Interrogation. Okay, see, two, five, interrogation. Noted. Next cookie. Old Jolly Case, record three. Carol Cookie. Alibi was present at the tree lighting ceremony at the time of the incident. Confirmed by Angel Cookie, Vampire Cookie. I was coming up with a, with a new poem in my suite after dessert. The conversation I had with Old Jolly inspired me. And I played cards with Angel Cookie and Vampire Cookie in the dining car. I saw Crambule Cookie and Old Jolly arguing. Perhaps that's why we. That's perhaps. Perhaps that's why my mind was elsewhere during. The tree lighting ceremony. <laughs> of course, I was completely mesmerized by the twinkling ornaments. I even came up with a new poem about love and peace. Would you like me to read it? What is the connection between Carol Cookie and Old Jolly? Hmm. Which statement? Was directly related to Carol Cookie and Paul Jolly. Oh God. Chance to talk to the sugar gnome? It's 
very complicated. This thing is not that easy to figure out. It's not really that straightforward as others are. I sang them a song to cheer them up. After all, old Jolly had to work during the holidays. That is true. Sometimes a little song filled with warmth and joy can bring peace to the troubled soul. Yeah. In our case, eternal peace. <laughs> uh, do you remember anything suspicious? Anything catch your eye last night? Let's see. Sparkling Cookie looked so sad when Old Jolly refused to drink. Why would Old Jolly refuse? Vampire Cookie, Angel Cookie, and Kara Cookie. Carol Cookie. We're together when the incident took place. I need to confirm this. Angel Cookie and Carol Cookie were together, and their stories perfectly align. Okay. Next scene, interrogation four. Mm. God, there's another one? Four of them? Alright, let's keep going, I guess. Last one. Scene two, episode... Scene two, six. Next, Cookie, four. please. Old Jolly Case, record four. Creme Brulee Cookie. Alibi. Played the grand piano in the banquet car. Confirmed by none. I I have nothing much to say. I was practicing in the banquet car. I was too my sweet to get my sheet music, but it was gone. That's why I went searching. I searched and searched, but nothing came up. So I s went to get... So I went to go practice instead. That's all. When the crime took place, Crambule Cookie was... Uh... You're saying that no one else was there in the banquet car who could confirm your alibi? No one at all heard you play? I suppose. Everyone else was in the lounge car, enjoying the ceremony. Besides, the lounge car is far more soundproof than the rest of the train. I doubt anyone heard me. Now that I think about it, there's something off about Crumbley's cookie's statement. Okay. Oh, he was anxious. Okay. So this one and the Three, but there's only two. Okay. Other cookies mentioned your little argument with the victim. Can you elaborate? I yes. I was a bit upset because of my sheet music. Hmm. No alibi? No witnesses? Besides, Creme Brulee Cookie was so openly aggressive towards old Jolly. Next, Cookie. 
A creme brulee cookie is the only one so far without an alibi. His motive may seem unclear now, but the same can be said about anyone. All right, why don't we continue after a small break? All right, okay. Interrogation five. That would be chapter two. <laughs> is done. Chapter 3 will be open in another 46 minutes. So, yeah. Alright, well, that's the uh, end of this one. Sorry I had to cheat through this a little bit because otherwise I'd never get, be able to get through this game. Because the uh, statements are very unclear. Hard to get through. So anyways, uh, that's the uh, end of this one. We'll do chapter 3 in 46 minutes when it opens, so keep in mind that. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe so we can reach 10 subscribers. Yeah? Yeah. 10 subscribers. <laughs> Alright. Anyways, bye!